Hi, I'm Nelson Davis, executive producer of Making It. Forty years ago, author Marshall McLuhan said the world was becoming a global village. Here's what he wrote. Today, after more than a century of electric technology, we've extended our central nervous system in a global embrace, abolishing both space and time. Well, you know, for small businesses, the results have been dramatic. With email, video conferencing, and websites, business owners now have the capacity to operate everywhere. In today's show, we're talking to entrepreneurs whose products can move internationally and even beyond because of their collaborations with the Boeing Company. Making It, featuring inspiring personal stories of struggle, triumph, and success from America's small business communities. To making it. I'm Lynette Romero. And I'm Emmett Miller. China native Joseph Tung began his career as a toy maker. His intense interest in design led him into the aerospace industry. He went to work for Rockwell, which is now part of the Boeing Corporation. Joseph worked there several years, but decided to strike out on his own. With his engineering skills and his wife's business expertise, they succeeded in winning their most important client, his former employer, Boeing. His new company, the Lita Corporation, manufactures circuit card assemblies and black box interfaces. It's a highly specialized business, and as you can imagine, capital requirements, skills, and standards are extremely high. Someday, I've got to have my own company doing those the thing I want to do. Joseph Tung combined his passion for making things and his determination to be his own boss and formed the Lita Corporation. 20 years ago, the company started in 1985. And when we started, and um, we don't have any outside help. When we started, it was uh, pretty rough, but uh, we went through. Finding people who can do this is a challenge. But LEAD is committed, not only to training their employees, but educating them as well. When they come here to work, they usually they do not know too much about electronics or manufacturing. And uh, we start from the beginning. The first thing what we train them is from uh, making the cables. And the next step is uh, we're trying to uh, show them how to uh, assemble printed circuit board, step by step. And then they go in the put the uh, put the house over or a mechanical enclosure, put everything over inside the box, and then you can turn the power on. And uh, it's so simple. And most of our employees, the new hire or been here for many many years, uh, they are coming from the overseas, and. Uh, they do not speak English, and, um, but they are here, they're willing to work. So, and uh, sometimes they go to school at night to learn English, but it's not good enough for our company because uh, we have a lot of terminology that we use for our production. After work, uh, all our workers, uh, they all come to the class to learn the terminology. All the names pop up, and right away they recognize, and they will help their work. Lita is a family-run business. Joseph's just one part of the team. My wife and I like a business partner. So, so sometimes I have some idea. I have to you know, not negotiate, but discuss with her. Can we make it? And uh, she always gave me the encouragement. Lita stands for Leslie and David, Dorothy and Joseph's kids. David Tung is Lita's vice president. David, um, he graduated with a, a bachelor degree in the biochemistry. But um, he likes to get involved for manufacturing. Lita specializes in electromechanical package design. We are manufacture cable to put some circuit board and some equipment together and they make the thing work. At the, and then 
later the computer you have little cover over so we are doing that too that means we put all our circuit all the circuit boards and cables and put in the housing by doing this so this is a, almost like electromechanical design to put everything together and uh, and functional. Less than 1% of Lita's parts are rejected. They have an extremely high standard of perfection, which makes them perfect suppliers to Boeing. Uh, right now, uh, about 90% 90, 90 of work is from Boeing. Uh, not commercial side, mostly it's a defense. There have been some slow times, but this belief in quality keeps customers coming back and keeps Lita going. If uh, we can keep the company going, even we don't make money, still go to get a job. And this way, keep the, as long keep the door open and the build up the confidence in your customer, uh, that's how we survive. Boeing's mentor-protege program promotes the growth of suppliers. The goal here is to enhance Alita's capabilities, enabling them to compete for more complex awards. Boeing is a mentor and uh, leader will be protege. So therefore, that means that Boeing has uh, all the resources of engineering, uh, technology, and uh, that will benefit to the uh, women-owned business, small business, to learn about the new technology and work as a team. So that was, uh, that was thrill, uh, thrill to us, and um, it's an exciting program. It's interesting what he said about his wife as his business partner. Mm -hmm. He has to consult with her. Absolutely. I like that. Yeah, and uh, Ashley and Secrets and Success coming up, we're going to talk about consulting and what you can do to, to get people to consult for you. You have to have your circle of trust. It's true, that you can and, and the, those are the people you count on. Exactly. Well, currently, sales for the Lita Corporation are at 6 to $7 million a year. But Joseph says those figures are about to increase with the inception of his new clean room. This specially built space will allow him to manufacture parts that require a much higher standard of care. So have you ever wished you had an expert consulting team that you could sit down with and just chew the fat about your business? In Secrets of Success, Bill Sorenstein says you need a board of advisors. And here are three steps to get started. How would you like to get great ideas from experienced business people on all the important and difficult challenges facing your company? A board of advisors can bring you this kind of expertise at a very reasonable cost. So here are three steps to help you get started. First. Look for individuals with the critical skills that you need to help guide your business to that next level. Avoid putting your friends and family members on the board. You already have access to their advice. Second, interview all the candidates face to face. Develop a comfort level and rapport with each person. Make sure they'll be able to work together well as a team. And finally, share all the relevant information with the board. They need all the facts to intelligently discuss the issues. Otherwise, it's the old story of garbage in, garbage out. A board of advisors can provide fresh ideas, insights, and perspectives that you can build on. It's never too early to start a board for your business. And for more information, you can reach Bill Sorenstein of Succession Strategies at succession-strategies.com. And you can watch streaming video of more secrets of success on our website, which is makingit.com. And coming up next, what does it take to become Boeing Supplier of the Year? Find out when you meet our next small business owner right after this break. Stay with us. In the spirit of small business, Making It is being brought to you by The Boeing Company, by Bank of America, Higher Standards, and by Southern California Edison. For over 100 years, life powered by Edison. I know you like that. You well, like that quote. You never know. You ought to work on the morning news sometime. <laughs> Go, welcome back to Making It. Today we're taking a look at the wide, wide world of business. 
and how Boeing helps entrepreneurs become part of it. Among Boeing's recognition programs for their vendors is the Supplier of the Year competition. 33 years ago, Native American Peggy Shreve formed Frontier Electronic Systems as an electrical engineering consulting firm. She began the company on a part-time basis in Stillwater, Oklahoma. Times were tough in the beginning, and Shreve couldn't even draw a paycheck for the first year. Peggy's accounting background served her well. When she was able to purchase a foreclosed motel for pennies on the dollar, she turned this 86,000 square foot building into her manufacturing facility. Government contracts from aerospace, maritime, and other agencies followed. She was even awarded a contract from NASA to supply parts to the International Space Station. The state of Oklahoma became home to the five civilized tribes that were relocated from other parts of the United States. Peggy Shreve was born into an Oklahoma family of seven kids. The Indian culture respects nature. This belief gives Peggy a sense of ancestry and pride, but it also brings a sense of history, currentness, and future full circle. In 1973, Peggy and Ed Shreve began manufacturing electronic equipment in their kitchen. Their consulting firm was a part-time job for both of them. He was a professor at Oklahoma State University teaching electrical engineering, and she worked in the accounting department. Soon, Frontier Engineering was formed. In 1997, the company was renamed Frontier Electronic Systems, or FES for short. In 2005, Frontier Electronic Systems was named Boeing Supplier of the Year in the small business category. FES designs and manufactures avionics, radar, and video distribution systems. Among their products are cockpit avionics for the FA-18 EF aircraft. The manufacturing technician is preparing the MyData-12 automated pick and placement system to place components on an F-18 EF engine fuel display. It's a processor card built for Boeing. A Frontier F-18 EF engine fuel display is undergoing environmental stress screen testing while operating as if it were in an aircraft cockpit. The F-18 EFD program manager and hardware engineer prepare an EFD for vigorous vibration testing utilizing a Ling vibration test system. This test is performed on every unit delivered to Boeing to ensure that it can perform flawlessly under the most severe operational conditions like gunfire. Test equipment for the V-22 Osprey tilt rotor aircraft. This electronic work instruction pictorially guides manufacturing assemblers through the intricacies of building a segment of a sophisticated test system for Boeing's V-22 Osprey. Flight line testers for the C-17 transport. A panoramic view of Frontier's manufacturing assembly floor. Electrical cables are being manufactured and electronics control modules are being built by Frontier for delivery to Boeing's C-17 production facility in Long Beach, California. Engineering support for the T-43 aircraft. A sophisticated depot test system for Boeing's PAC-3 missile program. Frontier designed automated test systems for the circuit assemblies being built in Boeing's El Paso, Texas facility for the Army's Patriot Advanced Capability third generation PAC-3 missile system. The project engineer and senior software engineer are verifying that the newly designed software being displayed on the computer properly tests the function of each of the circuit cards. Boeing teamed with Frontier to deliver 80 remote power control module simulators for NASA's International Space Station Laboratory. The Frontier designed extra vehicular audio control panel it is installed in the outer crew airlock on the International Space Station. Peggy Shreve has served as the president, the chief executive officer, and chairwoman of the board of directors since 1973. Peggy is an advocate for minority businesses and has received commendation for her function as a Native American business owner. Among her awards was being named Female Entrepreneur of the Year, which was presented to her by President Ronald Reagan at the White House. Peggy, her daughter Brenda Rolls, and Frontier's chief operating officer Chuck Gray oversee the day-to-day -day functioning of the company. Peggy believes that her association with a Boeing company is an excellent partnership that allows Frontier to grow in the right way. Being chosen as one of Boeing's top suppliers for 2005, quite an honor for Frontier Electronic Systems. The company was selected from a field of more than 5,000 in nearly 100 countries. The winners were chosen based on statistical measurements of their performance and quality, on-time delivery, support, and cost during a 12-month period.
And coming up next, our studio guest has information on how you can become a part of the worldwide Boeing team. He's Dan Cordy, Vice President of Supplier Management and Procurement. We'll meet him when we return. You can reach Joseph Tung at the Lita Corporation, their website, litacorp.net, and you can contact Peggy Shreve at Frontier Electronic Systems, their website is fescorp.com. And now let's turn things over to Lynette, who's in the studio with a very special guest. Thanks, Emmett. Mr. Dan Cordy is the Vice President of Supplier Management and Procurement for Boeing Integrated Defense Systems. The organization is comprised of more than 3,500 employees in 30 states and 8 countries. They're responsible for the annual purchase of $13 billion in products and services vital to Boeing. Welcome to Making It. We appreciate you being here. We have a lot of information that we want to get from you. But first of all, of course, Boeing is a global corporation. Can you give us an overview of exactly what the man management and procurement program is? Uh, sure. Uh, we contract with all the suppliers all over the world to build the products uh, that we provide to our, to our customers. I mean, we look at our business in a very uh, broad sense as what we're about is connecting and protecting the world. And we bring those partners inside the Boeing company to be a part of that family to help us build the amazing things that we do. So what advice would you have to a small business who wants to become part of the Boeing family? Well, the first thing I would say is to understand the uh, value proposition that you're bringing. What unique capability can you bring our customers uh, that they need for the products that we provide? Mm -hmm. uh, is, it a, is it a cost advantage that you have in the marketplace? Is it a unique technology? What are those types of things you bring? Secondly, do your research. Understand a little bit about our products and where your capabilities may fit into best. Okay, so that's kind of the, the big picture. What about some specific steps? What about beginning that process? The first thing you would do once you've gone through those couple of steps is uh, go through the Boeing website. There's a great place in www.boeing.com to actually go in, log in with your information, put your capabilities in there, and that way it's a good way for us to understand what you're bringing and to seek you out. There's another way, I mean, if you're uh, a diverse, uh, small or disadvantaged business supplier, I mean, come in through one of our, uh, our, our local offices and we've got uh, uh, diversity offices that work in each of our major locations that can help you work through the Boeing process. So there are a lot of ways that you're really trying to reach out to people and bring we them really in. We really are. We really are. I mean, we're trying to find the best technologies in the world to support our customers, and many times those technologies are going to come out of small companies. Can you tell us some more about partnering with suppliers and also in growing them together? Absolutely. I mean, partnership is so critical to what we do. I mean, once we find the best suppliers with the best technology or the right value proposition for Boeing, we want to work with them over the long term. We want to continuously improve together. I mean, a lot of times Boeing is learning from those small suppliers as mm -hmm. well how to improve our business. And likewise, we can maybe pass on some things about how to operate, for instance, in the government environment, uh, special regulations and how to, how to cope with those. Quite frankly, the quality standards are very, very high in our industry. You know, the types of products we build, we need to have uh, suppliers that can meet the most stringent standards in the world. Let's talk about some specific programs that you have specifically designed to target minority or disadvantaged businesses. Oh, absolutely. I think probably the premier one, as was discussed earlier, is the Mentor-Protege program. Mm -hmm. uh, we're actively working with uh, 16 companies right now, uh, just like Lita, who... Um, we help them and work through uh, teaching them things about the business uh, marketplace in DOD contracting. We help them with lean and continuous improvements in their factories. We can maybe help them on how to propose larger uh, scopes of work than what they'd previously taken on. 
And uh, we continue to do that over a longer period of time. Sometimes uh, two and three years we'll work with a, with really? a supplier, yes. It's like having a big brother. It is, it is. <laughs> we're working with 16 companies right now and we're trying to, to get up to 20 by the end of this year. Now, how does a business really position itself to become the most effective with Boeing? Well, I think it starts again with that value proposition of understanding what you're bringing to the table. And then it's a, it's a, a really a focus on continuous improvement. I mean, we need to find partners that are willing to work with us over the longer term. It's not always an easy path uh, to get to uh, some of the complex businesses that we're in. But companies that work with us, that drive continuous improvement, that help us work cost reduction, those are the companies we work with over a really long term. You mentioned the Lita Corporation. Now let's talk about the Lita Corporation and then Frontier Electronic Systems. How do you all interact with them? How does that work? Um, I, well, I'll take Frontier first because uh, Frontier is an interesting uh, a company and then we actually have them as part of uh, a supplier advisory council that, uh, that I have. I bring 10 suppliers together twice a year and actually bring them inside and show them what future um, things are going on inside of Boeing, new initiatives that we're having, new business opportunities, and I get their feedback before I roll out new systems, new tools, and it helps them understand where we're going, but they're also a feedback mechanism so that I understand whether this is the right kind of business process to interface with our key suppliers. What's next? We know the world is always changing in business and otherwise. What's next? I mean, it's what an incredible uh, world that we live in. Yeah. I mean, the sky is no limit for, for the Boeing company and, and, our, and our partners. I mean, so what's next? We're looking for the most innovative technologies out there. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's, it's everything you read about. It's from nanotechnologies to advanced computing systems to uh, unmanned vehicles. I mean, we're working in all these environments. It, mm -hmm. I mean, as a, as a child growing up and watching uh, Dick Tracy and seeing all those things now come to life, that's really what Boeing is doing. Right. The sky yeah. really is the limit. Huh? The sky, the sky is not the <laughs> limit when you uh, work with the Boeing company. <laughs> That's right. We go beyond the sky. We'll That's go right, right into space. Okay. Thanks so much. It was really nice to talk to you. Great information. We'll tell you how to reach supplier management procurement systems at Boeing when we return. So don't go away. <laughs> Featuring stories from American small business. Making it is being brought to you by Honda, the power of dreams by Comerica Bank. We listen, we understand, we make it work. And San Diego Gas and Electric, serving you today, planning for tomorrow. If you'd like to contact Daniel Cordy of the Supplier Management and Procurement Group at Boeing, log on to Boeing.com. The Making It website offers a wealth of resources to entrepreneurs. You can post a picture of yourself and your business or order a copy of today's show. These benefits and lots more at www.makingittv.com. Sky's not even the limit anymore, There's is it? There's no limit. No <laughs> limit. It goes beyond. <laughs> <laughs> that wraps it up for this edition of Making It. I'm Emmett Miller. And I'm Lynette Romero. Join us next time. Here's a final thought. I never want to give up. If I have an idea, I want to do it. May take one month, may take one year, 
but I'm not going to give up. I'm going to keep moving until I make it.